So around the summer of 2010, my Uncle Reggie was spending a lot of time out of state and he was having me watch over his house out in the burbs out in Fairfield. Like maybe once a month, me and a couple other friends, we get together at Uncle Reggie's spot. We have like our own little potluck thing, but we all throw in on like whatever. And we'd have a pretty good fucking time. It would be like me, Stinch, my homie Danny C, and there was this new cat, Ryan. And we was all selling oxys and shit. So we was all kind of like sharing the same profession. In a way, our fucking get together was kind of like employee workshops, man. It was like a bunch of different businessmen talking shop, man. Trading tools of the fucking secrets and shit like that. So at that time, I was also selling Zannies and I had a fucking gang of them. And one of them cats that was kicking with us, Ryan, he just bought a fucking punch off me, like 50 fucking four bars. And at that time, I had no idea his situation. I ain't seen that cat in days, but nobody filled me on a fucking thing. If I knew, I wouldn't have sold him a fucking thing. You see, this cat, Ryan, man, he one of them motherfuckers that had absolutely zero self-fucking control. And he done already killed himself, like almost killed himself twice the last fucking month alone. And I, like I said, I had no idea about this. And I feel bad for that motherfucker's family, man, because they was trying to do everything they could to fucking fix this cat. And they resorted to some pretty desperate measures to try to save his ass. They fucking booked him into some opiate recovery fucking place in Minnesota, blood. And check this shit out. This shit is fucking wild what they would do there, blood. When you first arrived at this place, they would fucking induce a coma on your ass. They'd put you under for a week straight. They would knock you out, put you in a coma for an entire week, make you go through with opiate withdrawal and not feel a fucking thing. And that was phase one. Phase two, after you go through that week of withdrawal, comatose, they fucking inject you and pump you full of opiate blockers so you can't get high anymore. You can shoot up fucking heroin all day, fatty, don't matter what the fuck it is, blood. Eat oxys all day long. They ain't gonna do a fucking thing for you, blood. You're gonna stay sober as hell from them. The problem was, Ryan wasn't willing to give up this lifestyle, man. He still wanted to get fucking high. He's still trying to do that for a living. He's still trying to sell shit even though he can't do it anymore. So he found another way to compensate. Benzos. Xanax, Klodipin, you fucking name it. If it's a Benzo, he can still get high up but the mobile blockers don't fucking work on them. So that's what he was doing. He was taking as many fucking Xanax as he could fucking find. So like I said, when this cat arrived, man, he bought a bunch of fucking Xannies off me. And then I come to find out that Danny C selling Klodipins, he got a bunch of them too. And I never seen somebody eat so much at one time. He ate like five or six of them fucking four bars right in front of me. And apparently Danny C telling me he ate a whole bunch of Klodipins before that. And we was about to pay the price for this. It's about 30, 40 minutes later. I noticed this motherfucker Ryan get real catatonic sitting there on the couch. He ain't saying shit. So I started asking him if he all right and shit like that. And at first he responded, but eventually he stopped responding. And then when he do say shit, it's just some bonkers ass shit don't make no fucking sense. He keep asking where the bathroom is over and over. He knows where the fucking bathroom is, but he keeps asking anyway. Eventually I got sick of this motherfucker asking. So I said, show here, bro. And I help him up. I show him where the bathroom is and he goes inside. He closes that door and locks it. And he don't fucking come out. It must have been an hour or more he in that fucking bathroom before anybody really starts noticing and saying shit. And eventually I go up there and start banging on the door. He ain't fucking answering. We let it slide for a minute, but I started getting worried. Started wondering what the fuck is going on in there, man. Is he still even alive? Is he just passed the fuck out? What's up? So I go, I pick the fucking lock, open that door, and that fool slumped over in there. It's a sad fucking sight to see, really, man, because he hanging halfway off his ass, hanging out off that fucking toilet. He got his pants down to his fucking ankles, and he just completely passed the fuck out. I wake his ass up, man. He come, he comes too. He seemed like he legit for a second, man. He seemed like he's cognitive in every fucking thing. And he leave there. He asked me where the water is. He said you need to get a glass of water. So I said, go in the kitchen, blood. Go get you some water, play. Just fucking, you good, man? I asked me he's good and shit like that. He said he good. He leaves that bathroom. He goes to get a fucking glass of water, and all hell breaks loose. I remember stepping out that fucking bathroom, and I just hear bang. It sounded like somebody fell down a fucking flight of stairs or something like that, man. I, I knew right away what the fuck it was. I knew it was that dumb motherfucker Ryan. And I was almost in a state of fucking shock for a second when I seen what this motherfucker did. But he somehow managed to completely fucking rip off Uncle Reggie's brand new fucking drawer off his kitchen. He just had that kitchen fucking remodel. He spent like 20 grand on that shit too. I mean, just a fucking month before something like that. This shit was all brand new. And this doped up motherfucker done knocked it off. I don't even know how the fuck he did it. Did he rip the motherfucker off? Did he run into it? All I know is that stupid brain dead fucking zombie just laying on the fucking ground and he trying to hand me it. He still got that fucking door in his hand, that fucking drawer. He's sitting there holding it. He's trying to hand it to me like it's all fucking good. 
And the best fucking part, Uncle Reggie's sent to be back in like a day after tomorrow, something like that. So now I got a motherfucking big ass crisis I'm gonna have to deal with. All because this dumb motherfucker can't handle his shit. Needless to say, the party's fucking over. That other cat that was kicking was Danny, he goes back to his spot. And Stan said he gonna stick around and help me out with this motherfucker because this is gonna be a big ass problem now. So I know this cat, Ryan, because his sister. Like, I mean, her had something going on a long fucking time ago. And she's the one introducing to me. It's her fucking family. She need to come deal with this motherfucker. Not only that, someone got to compensate me for what the fuck they just did, but they just cost me thousands of fucking dollars in damage. So I hit that bitch up, and she answered pretty quick. I let her know the situation. I said, your brother's all fucked up over here. He done destroyed my motherfucking uncle's fucking kitchen. This is a big fucking deal. It's gonna cause me a lot of motherfucking problems. So I'm telling her this shit, and she starts breaking down the phone, starts fucking crying. And she laces me up on everything, the whole fucking situation with him being a complete fucking fiend. And this motherfucker had done pulled some similar shit like two weeks before this apparently. As soon as he got out, he was pulling the same kind of shit. Got himself all fucked up at somebody else's house. Same situation. His sister out in Fresno, she say she begging me to just take care until she can get there. She don't want nobody else dealing with him. She said she coming straight there in the morning. She coming straight there picking him up and shit. So like I said, Stinch sticking around because he's my homie for life and shit like that. He gonna help me out with this motherfucker. And this cat just passed out in the fucking living room now. And we just trying to figure out what we gonna do. Stanch being Stanch, it don't take him long to figure out what the fuck he gonna do. He gonna amuse himself with this whole situation. And I wasn't gonna stop him either at this point, because this motherfucker don't piss me off. So I let Stanch do his work. Stanch goes up Uncle Reggie's room, finds some of Uncle Reggie's girlfriend's fucking makeup, blood. He comes out there and he dolls this motherfucker up good, man. He made him look amazing too, blood. Amazing. And that shit was funny as hell. It kind of put a lighter mood on things. We was laughing again and shit like that. And we were just making plans how we gonna fix that drawer and stuff like that, trying to just resolve the situation. I don't know how much more time passed, but it was fucking late at night. And we was on a pretty good cocktail of a whole bunch of different shit, man. Me and him, they all downers, less, so we was both tired as fuck. So I decided I'm gonna crash in that room and Stan said he gonna pass out on that couch right there, just keep an eye on that fucking dummy, pass out on the fucking floor like an idiot. So it seems like it's gonna be all good, but it ain't. It's like an hour later maybe and I hear a bang and it's enough to wake me up but I was kind of like inebriated. I wasn't thinking right, not putting two to two together right away. But all of a sudden, Stench come running in that room. Stench bolt in that fucking room, come push that door open, blood. He just look at me and he say this. Yo, get up, fool. He's destroying your uncle's house. Get up quick. I had no idea what to expect when I got out that room. But we don't even know how long this motherfucker was awake. We both passed out. And fucking Stench woke up with this fool standing over him. So I ran that corner, blood. I look in that living room and kitchen. I couldn't believe what the fuck I saw, blood. It was like a zombie had just fucking ransacked the entire house. Blood, there was just so much shit everywhere. The one I couldn't really get past, so I kept seeing this pink gooey shit everywhere. I was trying to figure out what the fuck it was. And then I saw where it was coming from. This dumb motherfucking Xanax zombie had opened up the fridge in some desperate attempt to get food and started ripping open this ground turkey and just started eating it raw right out the fucking container, blood. Maybe his stupid ass realized how disgusting it tastes or something because you see that shit was spit out and thrown out every fucking where. And I mean everywhere, in the blinds, on the floor, on the handles, every fucking where. And that was just the start because like the other shit I saw kind of got me in a panic. I thought it was blood, but it wasn't blood. This motherfucker had found those pop-up tops and Chef Boyardee cans and opened them all up. He was eating all them Chef Boyardee's raw and I seen a bunch of other cans all over the fucking place, but they wasn't the type you could just rip the top off. There was one you need a can opener for, and there was no way in hell he was gonna get at them. Uncle Reggie's woman, she's all into coffees and shit, these exotic coffees, and this motherfucker had gotten every bag of her coffees and ripped them open, and they was everywhere, all over the fucking floor and everything. So when I find this stupid motherfucker next room over, I'm trying to keep my cool blood. I was really wanting to get violent with this fool at this point, man, for doing this fucking shit. But I was trying to be empathetic at the same fucking time, man, but it was taking a lot of restraint. But not Stanch, though. And Stanch still say a fucking thing to me, what are you gonna do? But Stench just staring at him like mad dog and shit. And I know where Stench just punched this motherfucker hard right in his fucking face, man. And he put that fucking Xanax zombie into panic mode, man. He was just like a lost fucking zombie before. But now he was like a terrified zombie after he punched him in the face. Because he, he set off some alarms in his head. And to me, that shit ain't right, blood. That's like beating up a little kid or a retarded person or something like that. You can't fucking do that, man. And me and Stench start getting into it right then and there. And I throw that motherfucker out. I tell him to go, blood. You can't be doing it hitting people like that. So we get into a pretty heated argument. We actually didn't talk to each other for a couple weeks after that whole fucking event. But um, this dumb motherfucker Ryan now, he just laying there like a dummy in the fucking corner of the living room. 
he laying there, he ain't moving or nothing like that, but he awake and he looking around. He got like this real panic fucking look on his face. But then a little more time passes and he starts to kind of nod out. So I'm watching this motherfucker and he's snoring, he asleep. I know we all good. I need to take a shit. I've been needing to take a shit for a while now. And it was a perfect opportunity. So just to be on the safe side, I leave that door open when I'm taking a crap so I can hear this motherfucker if he was to wake up or something like that. And I'm halfway through taking a dump and lo and behold, this motherfucker come running by the room. I don't even get a chance to wipe my fucking ass. I gotta come running out there, pull my britches up and fucking grab this motherfucker and strong arm and get away from that door. Cause he immediately goes to that front door like fucking mumbling like a zombie trying to open that fucking thing but can't figure it out cause he's too stupid. And I gotta be honest with you, man. I was really tempted to just let that motherfucker go, man. Just let him get out that front door and just be like, bye bye, man. Just let him deal with the shit himself. But it would have been all fucking bad. At minimum, he would have went to jail. Maximum, he could have got himself fucking killed, man. He was like a fucking mumbling idiot zombie that was like. I was for real fucking debate locking his ass in the laundry room because I could have easily locked him in there, but I just wasn't sure, man. He probably ended up hurting himself in there or something like that. So I figured the best thing was just keep my eyes on him. So he back in his vegetative state in the living room and shit, just mumbling and shit like that, acting like he's kind of like passed out, this and that. And more hours have gone by. You can see the sun coming up. It must have been five or six in the morning. Eventually that fool go back and do a deep fucking snore. And you ain't gonna fucking believe this, but like I said, man, I took a lot of shit that night and I just couldn't stay awake. I fell asleep again. I don't know how long I was asleep for, man. It was a lot sunnier when I woke up though. It must have been 30, 40 fucking minutes I was asleep. And I don't know what point he woke up, but he did, and he escaped. Cause as soon as I woke up, I look over, I see he ain't there. I bolted up, man. I fucking scoured that entire house, looking up, down, everywhere. I got back to that main entry where I could see the front doors open, so I knew. Needless to say, this shit put me into complete fucking panic mode. I got in my ride and I started going up and down the streets everywhere looking for this motherfucker, going like 60, 70 down this neighborhood. Just in the nick of fucking time, I see this motherfucker way down the street, way at the end of the street. So I bolted down there. He up near the fucking elementary school and there's some mom with her kid. And he trying to talk to her, blade. I didn't really know what to do. I was kind of overwhelmed with the situation and my adrenaline was going everything else. So I just got out that car and I fucking strung on that stupid motherfucker and I threw his back in, back in the car violently, right in front of this lady. And she just looking at me with like this, like look of shock on her fucking face. And I just try to say it's my brother that he mentally disabled. We got to get him back home. But I don't think she was buying it. And later on, I find out she wasn't at all. She must have thought I was kidnapping this motherfucker or something like that. Or he was escaping from a kidnap and we had him drugged up or some shit. Because this lady was panic blood. And needless to say, she's going to call the cops about what she saw. I mean, this for reals was turning into some fucking weekend at Bernie shit, man. But I did something brilliant when I came back because I knew I was going to have to deal with this fucking Xanax zombie getting out the car. And I knew the garage was empty and I had a garage door opener. So I opened that garage door. I pulled that car right the fuck in the garage, closed that shit up. And then I strong armed him, get him out the fucking car. And nobody saw anything. It must have been about 7 a.m. around this time. And his sister finally hits me up, says she got up. They're about to head back from Fresno, back to the city, back to fucking Vallejo and shit like that. So she gonna come get him. I just gotta deal with him for like another three hours, something like that, and we all good. But then, there's another fucking problem. And a little more time's gone by now. He's sobering himself up a little bit. He's starting to try to use words and shit like that, trying to talk to you. And I'm starting to able to decipher what he's saying. He's saying the same two words over and over again. Milk and cereal. He just keeps moaning the shit. Milk, cereal. I asked him a question. I said, you all right, blood? What you doing? His response always, milk. Cereals, all this motherfucker will say, milk and cereal, over and over and over. At one point, he starts getting desperate. I don't know if he's trying to like communicate with me, like I'm supposed to go get him milk and cereal, but he starts like flipping out, but he keeps repeating over and over, screaming at one point. I started really thinking about fucking popping him one, but it must have been right around this time that just walk around the house. I noticed outside that there's fucking police driving up and down the street. That lady called the cops and it became a big fucking deal. This lady obviously thought she just witnessed a fucking kidnapping going on right in front of her and shit like that. And they brought out the entire fucking squad and they combing the entire goddamn neighborhood. So I start watching this shit. But as I'm trying to watch it, I'm getting constantly distracted by this dumb fucking zombie. He keeps doing shit to fuck with me. He makes me keep distracting me and shit like that. And I remember the last time I look out, I could see him talking to my fucking neighbor across the street. I shouldn't say my neighbor, she ain't my fucking neighbors. Uncle Reggie's neighbor is this nosy ass lady, man. And the cops is talking to her and I see her pointing over Uncle Reggie's house. And I knew it was all fucking bad. 
And needless to say, this shit put me in complete fucking panic mode because I knew it was just a matter of time before they're going to come over to the fucking house, knock on that door. And I got to deal with this motherfucker and shut him up so he ain't going to cause me no fucking problems. So I got real mean with that motherfucker. I had to shove his ass in the fucking laundry room and lock his ass in there. And it was right around perfect fucking timing because right when I did that shit, the knocking started. Do you think I answered that door? Hell no. They knocked like three or four fucking times. They got to the point they was pounding on that fucking door. But I didn't answer it, blood. But I thought they was going to kick the motherfucking door in or something. Anyway, I kept that motherfucker locked in that laundry room the rest of the day until his sister showed up and got his stupid ass. Because I wouldn't deal with that motherfucker no more. But that was just my experience with a Xanax zombie, blood. It was not a good one. I'm <laughs> sorry.